What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Got a really interesting product here to unbox today. Bought this on a whim from Amazon. Cost me $179, so not too expensive, but something I'm really excited about nonetheless. I have today the Lomo Instant Automat Magellan Edition. Now this is a Fuji Instax style camera, although I do believe this thing is gonna be a cut above the rest. Instead of the traditional plastic lenses like Fuji likes to use in their cameras, this has a glass lens, so I'm really excited about that. But let's get to it. Let's get this thing unboxed and take a look at it. Immediate impression is it's really, really nice packaging. It has this folding design, so you can actually open up, open it up and take a look at the, uh, the hardware inside. You can see we got the camera and then a few little accessories in there as well. And we'll, we'll explain all those and take a look at them as we uh, get through the camera. But just gonna pull the, pull the plastic off the front here. It's got a little tab on the side. Just kind of pull that up. Just kind of push the box over here to the side. And now we have the camera. And while we take a look at the camera, I'm gonna set everything else to the side. Immediate impression of this thing is it's much smaller than I thought. My daughter has a Fuji Insta baby blue camera. It's very big and bulbous. This is actually much smaller. It's got a really nice form factor. Now the material, it is a textured plastic. I've heard people online say that the build, they, they didn't feel like the build quality was very high, but holding it in my hand actually feels pretty good. I really like the way this, this material feels, the way that, like I said, they've textured it. And I think it's gonna stay in the hand pretty good. Uh, got a nice grip, it got a nice hand feel. I think it'll be nice and secure. As I stated a second ago, it is the Magellan edition. So it's got this, you can take a look at it there. It's got this little matte print on the side and actually says Magellan on the front. That's kind of neat. I also really like the black and orange color scheme. Really, really cool look. It's also got the Lomography title on the top. So just a really nice looking camera. I actually really do like the design and I think I'll be more prone to carry this out than something like the Fuji Instax. To, to my eye, they don't look that great. Something that I was interested to take a look at was the film door. I've read a few reviews of this online and folks say that the, the, uh, the film door is rather flimsy. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna open it up for you here and I can't actually feel that that hinge is pretty weak. So I guess, I guess the reviews were probably right on that front. So I think that you guys are gonna wanna be careful with that. It, I mean, it's as long as you're not too hard on it, it's gonna be fine. But at least right now, I can see that that's probably gonna be a weak point of the camera. So as you're opening and closing the camera, just be careful. This is not an all metal Nikon from the 1950s. This is a, this is a, a plastic camera that you paid less than $200 for. So uh, maybe just be careful with that. Taking a look at that lens, this is, this is the focal point of this camera. This is what drew me to the camera, is the all glass f4.5 wide angle lens. Now, if you know anything about Instax cameras, this is the widest camera lens available on the market and also the fastest. You're effectively shooting a large format negative on this camera. It's the, the Fuji Instax is a pretty big piece of film versus a traditional 35 millimeter sensor. So if you know anything about large format photography, f4.5 is pretty darn fast. So that's gonna allow you to get better images, cleaner images in lower light, and not have to drag that exposure or use the flash that this camera also has on the outside as well. So if you need flash, it is there. Also worth noting about the lens is the focusing system. It uses a zone focusing system, so you're gonna have to be careful. It's got some markings on the side, so it does have auto focusing, but you kinda need to know what you're shooting so that you can set the focal range and allow the camera to stand a better chance at grabbing focus on whatever your target is. So that's something worth noting as well. I did point out that there's a flash and a, a cute little mirror on the front. So in the world of selfies, uh, we have this little mirror that we can look at to see kind of what the, uh, the image is gonna be, if you can see it there in the corner, just right there. So that's pretty handy. It's really good engineering and design choices by Lomography there. On the back, you have some buttons. Very, very small, probably hard to hit. You have a plus and minus here for exposure compensation. You have automatic versus bulb mode. Uh, you have multiple exposure and you have flash or no flash. So very, very rudimentary controls, uh, but that is nice because it keeps it nice and simple. And as someone who runs around shooting a Sony a7R III, uh, the exact reason I bought this camera was to have something I'd take on little trips, 
be able to get an image quickly, something to stick inside a notebook or stick onto the refrigerator and not have to worry about getting home and editing it. So while it is a very simple design, I don't think folks are buying this camera uh, to edit their pictures or to upload them on the computer or anything like that. I think the limited control scheme is gonna actually be a benefit to a lot of photographers and not a detriment. Also worth noting is you have a tripod thread on the bottom. So if you do wanna set it up to take a picture, a long exposure, uh, you do have a tripod mount at the bottom so you can screw in your favorite tripod head. So that's, that's another nice feature and a very good thought uh, from Lomography as well. Putting the camera aside, I think I've looked at that enough at this point. I'm gonna take a look at some of the accessories. The box actually comes with three, three distinctive lens cap looking things. The first one here is actually the lens cap. Now this is not just any lens cap, it's actually got some really clever features built in. This, is act this actually serves two purposes. This works as a lens cap, like I pointed out, you just clip it in, pop it in, pop it out. But it also has a timer and a shutter uh, release button and it communicates with the camera through infrared. So as long as you're within a certain amount of feet, this will, you will be able to remotely trigger the camera. So back to the using the tripod and, and setting the camera up on its own, you can actually take the picture with the uh, remote release built into the lens cap. I don't have any idea how long the battery would last. I, I assume this thing works off a battery of some sort, but one has to think if its only function is to activate the shutter, it's gonna last a pretty good long time. So really, really clever technology built into this. And, and, and again, adding to that value for 180 bucks, really, really incredible. So I really dig it. The next accessory, Lomography calls the glass splitzer. This thing is really neat as well. It actually allows you to block off portions of the frame so that when you're taking your long exposures, you can actually block off portions of the film and not expose that piece of film. So that's really cool. So if you want to do some neat double exposures, you can see cool examples online of folks who've done this. Uh, it really allows you to expand your creative options. Really, really interested to try this. I'd be able to get some really cool photos with relative ease that would require a lot of Photoshop post-processing if I were to shoot them with my Sony. So excited to try that out as well. And the last accessory here that was uh, included by Lomography is an additional close-up lens. Now they call it a close-up lens. They are very careful to avoid the word macro. Um, I don't think this is a macro lens, but I do think this will allow you to get some more macro-like shots. It actually says 10 centimeters. So I, you screw this into the filter thread. I think it was a 43 millimeter filter thread. I don't think I touched on that when I was talking about the lens. Let you, let you screw that in and get some more close-up shots. So that's really cool. Not gonna give you the macro capabilities that you would get with a specialized macro lens, but doesn't leave you out on the dry if you do wanna get a close-up picture of a flower or something cool like that. Really, really neat, and I'm really glad they included that. Another thing that I was gonna to touch on since I just mentioned it briefly, was it does come with a filter thread. So if you do have filters, you can buy adapter rings to step up to your, to your larger filters that you already have on hand. I'm already thinking of how I can equip my circular polarizer. Leave it to me, the, the, the professional photographer, to complicate an uncomplicated uh, device, but here we are. The last thing inside the package, you have these two little boxes, and I haven't opened these up yet to take a look at them. This box actually contains what appear to be photo ideas. So it's got like these trading cards, but on the back, it's got like suggestions for different ways you can get unique photos and some examples of, of ideas that you may want to try to replicate. So super, super cool. I'm glad they included those. Uh, as photographers, we can get in a rut. Always cool to have uh, some ideas for inspiration on hand. So kudos to Lomography. The other box, now these, this is kind of the weird stuff. I'm already just dumping it out carelessly. Taking a look at this, we have some photo stands. These are just little prop ups where you can, you can set, you can fold these and set your photos up on them after you take them. We have magnet strips so you can apply the magnets to the back of your photos, stick them on the refrigerator. You have some glue dots, which is kind of what I envision using the camera for. I have, an, I have a, a moleskin notebook that I really enjoy uh, jotting down notes and different ideas. It's gonna be really cool to stick some of my images inside the notebook and have them there. So glue dots to fix your photos to the pages. And this little manual shows you how to use all of the, the included pieces of, of equipment there. One thing I did want to point out before I wrapped up my unboxing video here is what it doesn't come with. The most obvious thing being film. It doesn't come with any film, so you're gonna have to buy your own. It shoots Fuji Instax mini format, so you're gonna have to snag a few packs of that if you wanna go out and start shooting right away. 
The other thing that you're gonna need is batteries. It takes two CR2 format lithium batteries, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you get those before you get the camera, or you're gonna be home high and dry, not able to take your camera out for a test drive. So all in all, that's my unboxing of the camera. Early impressions are, it's really cool. I'm super excited about it for 180 bucks. I don't think I could have went wrong. I do intend for this to be a, an ongoing series of sorts. There aren't a ton of videos about this camera on the internet. I want to do some head-to-head -head comparisons with an Instax camera. So check out the quality of the two and see if it's really delivering on the promise of higher image quality with that all glass lens. So, so stay tuned to the channel for videos like that. And I will have a comprehensive review of this camera as I take it out and shoot it and kind of get familiar with it. And, and, I'll, and I'll let you guys know. So, But that brings my unboxing video to a close. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you enjoy this type of content. I'm always doing new and interesting stuff with photography, checking out the latest gear and going to cool places. So if you like what you see, click the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell. And again, thank you guys so much for watching.